This assignment for your 3D design class is called mitate. And mitate is a Japanese term which roughly translates out into a kind of high class recycling. It's where something that's maybe cast off, like a piece of um, an old wooden bridge uh, pier turns into a stone basin or a wooden basin for water um, for the tea ceremony or where the floor of an old train car becomes a gate for a garden. Um, these kinds of ideas where something that is kind of rejected, cast off uh, in process of decay is redefined and placed by its placement and its presentation becomes something uh, of profound beauty and interest, something of great um, uh, quality that people are very interested in getting to uh, appreciate. So the subtitle on this one is Marcel Duchamp meets Senyo Rikyu, and that's because Senyo Rikyu uh, is the sort of Leonardo da Vinci of tea during the renaissance of Japanese art in the mid-1500s. Senyo Rikyu was operating in the mid-1500s, and he brought the concepts of wabi and sabi to tea, and it's these concepts that help create for us an understanding of what can be mitate um, of these kinds of old recycled items that become very important um, objects for veneration. And then Marcel Duchamp, um, in a very contemporary conceptual way, he was sort of the father of conceptual art. And this is his piece called The Fountain. Um, where he took a urinal and laid it on its side and exhibited it in a major contemporary art ex exhibition in 1917. And he would sign some of these pieces with his um, nom de plume, uh, R. Mutt. And these pieces, um, he called them ready-mades. And the concept there was something similar to Mitate. What, what Marcel Duchamp, here he is, I'm wondering if I have another image here. What, what Marcel Duchamp was saying in all of this is that the artist has an eye um, that can identify art existing in an object in the world. And merely the, uh, the act of picking that object and presenting it for exhibition is what makes it art. And so he went on to make these things called ready-mades. On the right, um, was a um, ready-made um, of an existing piece. This is a wine bottle drying rack. And on the left, uh, this is called a combine, where he would take two ready-mades, a stool and a bicycle wheel, and join them to make his work of art. Here is a similar idea by Pablo Picasso. This was called the bull, and um, with a bicycle seat and bicycle handles, he's created this image. So one of the aspects of mitate is how can you take an object, oftentimes an object of little or no value that is thrown aside and cast off, and how can you take that and make it um, an object of interest? And one of the ways that that is done is by finding a context, a way of placing it in, in a world where it brings attention to itself. And this idea of niche um, that you find often in uh, churches and cathedrals, um, sometimes in other kinds of secular architecture, and here you can see these three bottles existing in niches, bringing a lot of attention, and the lighting helps too, to say, oh, this is important, this is serious. Here is um, a roadside altar niche here, and you can also see, again, uh, in this religious context, with the radiating rocks, how all attention is brought into that. You could probably put a Coca-Cola bottle in the middle of that image, and you would find uh, people being interested in it. But it's a little more complicated than that. You do need to find an object uh, worthy of attention. And a lot of time, and the trick is to find something that people have overlooked or cast off and to give it new life. Here is a really dramatic niche in some architecture. And what you see in the center is this um, piece of kind of turf with, uh, with vegetation growing from it, and it's given so much honor and respect by this placement. 
Here again is a niche um, kind of environment. This is uh, almost like a tokonoma in a tea house. It's a, a very beautiful setting, um, which brings a lot of attention to that one pot in the corner. So context, how you place it, where you place it. Then there is the whole idea of a reliquary, which is uh, something that comes again out of the Catholic Church. And the Catholic Church creates these really ornate reliquaries of, of precious metals and sometimes jewels as well. And they contain within them some aspect of, uh, of a saint, an actual bone. In these glass centers, there's a bone, the knuckle bone of St. Sebastian or... Um, or the fingernail of St. John, all kinds of parts of human uh, bodies, uh, formerly saints, that are placed in these reliquary. And it's consider it's an important, most cathedrals in Europe, and probably in the United States too, have reliquaries, usually um, in the uh, catacombs in the basements, um, held um, in great care. And you can see how ornate and gorgeous these are, how beautiful um, the 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 creation of these objects are very involved, lots of gold, and in this case, precious stones. And they can get very, very involved. Uh, the most involved reliquary I've been involved, see, I've seen the most um, engaged reliquary is um, uh, an, an entire cathedral called Saint Chapelle, which was built by Louis XIV, Louis the Fourteenth in France. Uh, to house what he believed was the crown of thorns that he purchased uh, that was the original crown of thorns that Jesus wore in his crucifixion. That was what he thought he bought. Um, and he built an entire cathedral absolutely adorned through and through. It's one of the most uh, um, stained glass windows per square foot in any cathedral. A gorgeous, gorgeous uh, cathedral, which is in itself an entire reliquary for this crown of thorns. Now, we're going to move to uh, looking at some examples of mitate. Um, and this is what inspired this assignment was uh, an experience I had while living in Japan. I met a fellow who I came to call mitate sensei because what he would do is he would find objects, cast off objects of little or no importance, and he would work with them and get them into a context so that they were really beautiful and um, deserved um, sort of a contem contemplative attention. And he would make these and then he would place them in his small home and nothing there was nothing else in his home he pretty much lived with these objects and he would fill his home with these objects take about six months and then he'd have private showings where he'd invite people to come see these items and um, I was invited one time and at the end of uh, a certain period of time he would pack them all away and start again and fill his house with new mitate and then invite people in again to see them so in this case on this on this little table he's painted the surface yellow to bring attention to it, it just draws your attention right into the center of this piece and that half curve the metal that you see sitting up there is um, is a um, quarter of a round of a guard on a sword. So the part of the sword that keeps your hand from sliding into the blade, um, that's uh, one quarter of it. And we'll get a little closer and see it. There you go. Um, and it's just a beautiful piece of old metal that he has given so much attention to by creating this little table for it and this little yellow band to bring your eye right to the piece. And it's on this large board. The large board that it's sitting on is actually used. It's an antique um, tool for making tofu. And here you have a uh, lovely round stone that he's found, and he's decided to bring attention to it by surrounding it in this beautiful st rusted steel ring on a, on a wooden board. That's his composition. Here, he's taken the lid of an old tofu making uh, box, an old box for uh, producing tofu. Um, tofu is made in Japan by specialists who have stores just for making and selling tofu. And here, he's taken one of these lids and he's painted, there's an indent where the lid fits on top of the container. And he's, he's hung that up and he's painted a red ring to emphasize that circle. And that's the entire piece. Here is another mounted piece. This is a street, um, is um, 
the cover of uh, of a street uh, or a manhole a manhole cover and it's flipped upside down so you see the underside of the cast iron manhole cover here is a small porcelain doll um, where um, attention is brought to it by its placement on this um, piece of uh, antique wood uh, on a bracket on the wall this is one of my favorite things that he would do is he would find um you know japan has an ancient history and there are the roofs were often covered with copper sheets um as uh, over the tiles and this is one of those copper sheetings and they would be up on roofs for 500 plus years and he um occasionally will find uh buildings that have been torn down or access to these and he would select the ones that felt very much like a contemporary composition and then he would mount them on the wall here's another example he would uh, frame them uh, behind glass like uh, contemporary prints here is a piece of concrete which again he has just painted uh, part of it yellow and left it as an object to be admired here we have a uh, piece of wood that he has nailed uh, brads, little metal brads, to create this kind of rhythm of uh, little silver spots. And then um, the little uh, key ring up at the top that he's hanging almost like a moon in the sky. And down below, that is um, two pieces of a case which would hold a hanko or a chop uh, for signing, uh, a Japanese stamp for signing one's name. Here's a close-up of the little ring. And then this is a, a concrete pipe, um, just a, a little section of concrete pipe that is finished with a, a cast iron lid. So it's quite old, quite ancient. And he's found this and he's turned it into a uh, hana ire, a, um, a jar for flower arranging for tea ceremony. Very elegant. Uh, another piece of rusted metal where he has put it on a tray which then he's engraved a little bit of a moon and gilded that for this presentation. This is a corrugated piece of metal uh, quite degraded and rusted just hanging on the wall. You can see that the, his walls are um, pine uh, kind of this this uh, pine plywood um, or wood grain plywood, which I find quite distracting, but that's what, what his house was made out of. Here's another roof tile. And this is an interesting piece. It's a um, hand forged steel uh, bar. Uh, at the very top is a small piece of coral that he's found on the beach and it's, it's mounted in a piece of old wood. Now we're going to see what students have done with this concept. Here's a piece. Um, what you're looking at is a kind of petrified piece of chamois, uh, the kind of cloth that's used to wipe down cars and clean cars. And this is the, this is the entire presentation that this student made, uh, built this whole structure just to display this piece of petrified chamois. Really quite impressive and beautiful. It really works to bring attention and to create a kind of the proportions of her presentation really make this um, what would normally be just a, a piece of garbage um, worthy of contemplation. And here is an old mannequin um, arm that she's mounted on the wall and um, added where the hand might be is a hammerhead. And this piece here is actually a little piece of metal cutout that uh, we used to be able to find these things in the welding yard next to the sculpture room. Um, just this little section uh, was the part in between the parts that were needed. So just a cutout piece of metal. And um, you can see up close, there's a that's a massive block of steel that it's sitting on. And there's a little tube that she's filled with wax. And then she's embedded a washer on the end just to create a little bit more energy, a little bit more detail at the base of the piece. It gives it a, a much more credibility. And here's another view of the whole piece. Again, that bottom block is solid steel. And here's a, a, a lovely uh, element here. And again, showing you uh, ways that you can really take uh, something that is 
something uh, that in this case might even be considered repulsive by some people. But this student found this uh, desiccated lizard and thought it was quite beautiful and wanted to honor the lizard in its dying, wanted to give it um, some kind of little uh, altar. So she, she took this piece of wood and set it up and uh, hung the lizard in the space with a little um, rusted steel can below it to create this altar space for this lizard gone by. And here, this is a mounted, uh, uh, found, uh, this all these little spotted things there, a steel um, welding assignment. Somebody's practicing spot welding. And so uh, this student found those, those elements and just mounted it on a wall. And they're quite wonderful. Here, uh, a student took a piece of grate and then suspended, a craft, crafted a, a ceramic form uh, with a little bit of metal inclusion there and um, created that, uh, this piece um, of just hanging it from the grate there. And now this is a piece of welded uh, material, again, from the welding shop. And uh, you can see that there's a lot going on with the various uh, welding that was going on. She's just taken it and mounted it. And again, finding this this uh, rec this post, this wooden post to set it on, gives it a little bit more um, gravitas, a little bit more attention, because finding a nicely proportioned foundation for it to say, hey, this is serious, this is important. Um, and we'll see lots of different things. Here's a car horn, again, mounted on a steel cylinder. Here, uh, mounted on the wall, is a, um, uh, again, a combination of a formed ceramic piece on a steel element. And this is uh, some kind of heater grate, and the student simply put a piece of blue paper behind it in order to bring out the uh, patterns of the, the grate. And these were, I found these to be just poetic. This is a crushed can suspended with fishing line from a branch that is perched on top of a curved glass tile. Very elegant, very simple, and um, bringing a lot of uh, grace and interest. And in the mouth of this can was a little dandelion that she allowed to slowly decay. Just an elegant, elegant piece of um, making it so beautiful. And really, there's nothing here that anybody would value. Um, and she did another piece uh, here with the same idea, but instead using an old rusted bed spring. Kind of a beautiful drawing in space. And that gives you an example of um, the idea of mitate. You really have two things. One, you have to find the object, and then you have to figure out how to present it to make it um, a powerful presentation, to help it go from transformed from something that's cast off and worthless to something of great value that people can't imagine living without. Stay safe. Make art.